Now let's tackle uh, distance, area, and volume measurements of a solid block. Our solid block is going to be a food box. Um, and the only stipulations for the food box is its longest side should be shorter than your ruler so that you can't actually measure it. And um, let's see, so I've chosen this Honeymade uh, graham cracker box. And the shortest side, which for me is right here, that's going to be my width. Then this side is going to be my length. And then the long side of the box, oh, sorry, uh, this is going to be my height. This is going to be my length. And you just want to measure each of them four times. So uh, I don't know. Let's give you a little more space there. Uh, let's see. So I'm going to have one, two, and then I got the bottom two as well. So I mean, I'm going to read in millimeters, and my box is open, so it's not ideal. So actually, I'm going to read my box. Start with the line right on the zero and read it on the other side. And I'm getting, uh, looks like 64. And since this is in millimeters, I have to read to 10th of a millimeter. So uh, does it say what to record it in? Nope. Um, so let's see, I'm gonna actually go 64. Point one for one of my width measurements millimeters and then um, I'm going to go on this side this side looks like 65.8 Now I'm going to go down near the bottom of the box, 64.2, yeah, that's what I have to do, <laughs> got a little confused there, and sixty-four point zero. So that's going to be my four. Uh, I do want you to actually, for this one, your width, I am going to ask you to actually fill out the calculation here in table one. So that means you're going to do 64.1, because this is going to be the one that we're going to do longhand. 65.8, 64.1. And 64.0 millimeters, and there is no fifth value. And what I mean is, you're going to do this longhand. You're going to do this using your calculator, and you're going to do so. This calculation is going to be each of your points minus the average, and the average, let's figure that out first. Again, longhand 64.1 plus 65.8 plus 64.2 plus 64.0, which we can just enter 64. I get 258.1. Then I'm going to divide by 4. I get 64.525. And uh, when I added these up, they go to the tenths place. So I'm going to have 64.5 as my number of sig figs. I'm just going to use 64.5 in my calculations going forwards. You can keep all of them, but you're going to see that when we do the subtraction, we're going to be back to the tenths place anyway. Now each of these is going to be minus 64.5. to get the number that goes into this next uh, area, which is going to be 64.1. Oh, I can probably do that. Zero point is going to be z negative 0 0.4. Well, 
I'm going to do this one on my calculator. 65.8 minus 64.5. I get 1.3 positive minus 0 0.3 minus 0 0.5. That is the difference between each point and the average. Then I just have to square it, and I should have done that each time. So 0.4 minus squared, 0 0.16. 1.3 squared, 1 1.69, 0.3, and since they're squared, you don't have to put in the minus sign, but just for fun, I will square it, 0 0.09, 0 0.0, oh, no, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 minus squared, 0 0.25. Now you'll have your own numbers here, but I am stepping you through the process. This sum, means take the sum of all these values, 0.25 plus 0 0.09 plus 1.69 plus 0 0.16, I get 2.19. And then the standard deviation, which we use sigma for, not s, is going to be this number we've got right here, divided by n minus one, where n is the number, number of sample points, which is four. So, so n minus 1 will be 3. 2.19 is the number on top. Square root it, and you're going to get your sigma, and that's just a scribble out there. So 2.19 divided by 3, square root. Is that right? 0.85, I think so, 2.19, 2.19 divided by 3 equals, aha, no, now I did it right, 0.85, sigma equals 0 0.85 as my standard deviation, 8544, etc., etc., equals 0 0.9, or plus or minus. So we now have our average and our standard deviation, and we can report it over here. So 64.5 plus or minus 0 0.9. And you don't have to do the other ones this longhand way. You just have to do width this longhand way. You can, but uh, I would consider doing it in Excel. And in fact, I always like to put these numbers into Excel and just check anyway that my whole procedure works well. Let's see. So you're going to do height. You're going to do length. You're going to be able to fill out this bottom part of this table. And let's stop this video there.